Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back learners the video is for the subject of geography for the course of bachelor's in arts with geography or bachelor's in arts with honors in geography the video is for the paper of climatology today we are going to discuss lecture 6 of module 3 the topic of the lecture is tertiary wind circulation or local winds the video is being recorded by dr pallavi upreeti the course coordinator and presenter for the video is dr pallavi upreeti affiliated to department of geography dune university the academic expert and reviewer for the video is professor santosh verma head of the department department of geography sdm pg government degree college doiwala dehradun affiliated to shri dev suman uttarakhand university the video is produced and presented under the project name dth swayam prabha channels of mhrd new delhi india Hello learners I am Dr Pallavi Upreeti assistant professor in the department of geography in Dr Nityanand Himalayan Research and Study Center Doon University Dehradun In our previous lectures we have already covered planetary wind circulation and secondary wind circulation and in this particular video lecture we will be covering the tertiary wind circulation and in the process we will also be discussing the major local winds of different regions So let's begin. In the due course of this video lecture, the learners will be able to understand the classification of winds, which we have already done previously. But we will just give you a brief outline of that, and then we will be discussing what are local winds, local winds, and their circulation mechanism, the classification of local winds, and what are the different important local winds of the world, and then we will. discuss the local winds continent wise we will take each continent and then we will be describing the different local winds which are found in each continent and finally we will be discussing the importance of local winds in overall atmospheric circulation in general and the importance of local winds for a specific local region also so let's start with the understanding of local winds starting with the classification of winds so we have already discussed while we were discussing the planetary wind circulation and the secondary wind circulation that there are primarily three types of wind circulation first one is the primary wind circulation or planetary wind circulation which we have already discussed then second one is the secondary wind circulation also called as periodic winds or regional winds which also we have discussed in detail and today we will be focusing on the third type of wind which is the tertiary winds for the local wind circulation so let's see what are these tertiary winds and how do they impact the general atmospheric circulation what are tertiary winds or local winds tertiary winds are small scale wind circulation systems or local winds which blow only during a particular period of the day or year over a specific region they blow over small regions or areas primarily due to the small scale localized differences in the temperature conditions and consequently the air pressure conditions of a specific location so they blow between small high and low pressure system which are confined to specific small region they can move in any direction depending upon the specific pressure conditions but mostly cover short distances and are concentrated to small territorial extent their regional dimension and their aerial extent is comparatively smaller than the planetary wind circulation also and secondary wind circulation systems also they are very localized wind circulation systems because of which they can be unique to a specific area 
as the tertiary winds are confined to small specific regions the local geography has a significant impact on the local wind circulation such as they can be influenced by the proximity of ocean lake or mountain barrier or even plateau regions they are local in extent and are confined to the lowest levels of the atmosphere their dimension vertically in the atmosphere while circulating is also confined to the lower limits of the atmosphere only unlike the planetary wind circulation or even certain secondary wind circulation systems also which can extend to higher parts of the atmosphere the weather and climate of a region can be influenced by local winds and their effects are felt only in that specific area therefore these tertiary winds or local winds can be specific to a particular area they can be hot cold ice filled dust rich in accordance with the local characteristics so they are highly influenced by the local conditions local geographical geophysical conditions which are found in a particular area and influenced by those conditions they can either be hot cold ice filled they can be laden with dust or they can be laden with moisture also depending upon the local geophysical conditions and several winds are found across various latitudes which are influenced by the local geographical conditions and confined to specific local area recognized among them is one of the important local wind which is found during the summer time period in india also and we have heard its name it is loo similarly various local winds are found across the globe with specific distinctive characteristics so let's see the classification of these local winds now classification of local winds local winds can be classified based on various factors they can be classified based on regions they can be classified based on temperature conditions let's see what is the thermal classification of local winds so based on the temperature conditions the local winds can be cold and they also can be warm or hot so the first type of local wind based on thermal classification of local wind is the cold and dry type of local wind and these type of local winds as the name suggest are definitely cold in nature and they are dry also and these type of winds generally originate from two regions in the world first type of regions are the polar areas very very cold areas which are totally covered under ice for most of the year since those regions are very very cold regions and such winds they blow out from these polar areas as cold and dry winds in both the hemispheres and these winds are named in different regions differently for example in canada they are called as blizzards in certain regions of russia they are also called as buran or farga also so they are local winds so we will be discussing each and every local wind continent wise specifically just for example you should know that cold and dry winds originate from two main areas of the world first one is the polar areas which are totally covered with ice throughout the year and second type of cold and dry winds originate from the mountain tops which are found across the latitudes and blow towards the valley regions where they accumulate and drops the temperature of the valley regions such type of winds are mistral and bora winds for example these are two types of winds which are found in the european region and we will be discussing them in detail and these types of winds are very dominant during the winter time period or during the night time when the pressure gradient and temperature gradient is very very steep so these are cold and dry winds based on the thermal classification of local winds second type of winds under thermal classification are the warm and dry winds and these particular type of winds as the name suggests are warm and 
dry in nature. And these types of winds also originate from specific regions of the world, particularly either from the tropical areas or low latitudinal areas during the summer time period or during the daytime period. And within these tropical areas also, the tropical desert regions are prominent regions from where these particular winds originate. So definitely if they originate from dry, warm tropical deserts, they are going to be warm and dry in nature and they blow out from these regions in different different directions. Another area from where warm and dry winds originate are the mountain tops and plateau tops regions. Although initially these particular winds which blow out from the mountain top and plateau top regions are cold and dry in nature, but as they sink down towards the valley bottoms along the slope towards the valley bottoms, in the process they become warm and this particular phenomena generally happens along the leeward side of mountain or plateau. So this process is primarily called as adiabatic warming up of winds. And we have already discussed this particular phenomena while we were discussing the secondary wind circulation when we were discussing the mountain and valley breeze, catabatic and anabatic wind systems. But I will repeat once again, when the moisture laden winds are forced to ascend a mountain barrier, so along the windward side after reaching a particular height, these winds condense and lead to precipitation. However, after reaching a specific height in the mountain areas, the winds descend along the leeward side and as they descend, the temperature of this particular parcel of air increases primarily due to more air pressure near to sea level. So definitely the valley regions along the leeward side have more air pressure as compared to the mountain tops and as the air descend these slopes, the high air pressure near the ground surface compresses the air parcel increasing its temperature. And this type of air is actually beneficial for the crops, for the orchards and they melt away the snow or frost in those regions keeping them frost free or ice free. Hence they are good for agriculture also. So they are warm and dry winds. So definitely the warm and dry winds originate from two regions. First the warm tropical desert regions or tropical warm areas and blow out from these regions as warm and dry winds. And second type of winds blow along the leeward side of the mountain barrier and they descend as warm and dry winds filling up the valley regions along the leeward side. Besides warm and dry winds, sometimes these warm and dry winds while crossing over vast expanses of water pick up moisture and these moisture laden winds when they are obstructed by any orographic barrier, they are forced to ascend that orographic barrier leading to rainfall in those areas. For example, Sirocco is a warm and dry wind which move out from the Sahara desert region towards the European areas. And while crossing the Mediterranean Sea, they pick up moisture, although initially they were warm and dry while they were blowing out from the Sahara desert. But on their northward journey, because they cross a vast expanse of Mediterranean Sea, they also pick up moisture and in the process they become warm and moist wind and they are responsible for precipitation along the southward facing slopes of mountains in the southern European areas. So warm winds can be warm and dry and warm winds can be warm and moist in nature also. And these warm and dry winds or cold and dry winds are found across regions all around the globe. The local winds are also classified on the basis of continents. So in each continent you can have warm and dry winds also, cold and dry winds also and warm and moist winds also. 
So besides keeping in mind the thermal classification of winds, the local winds can also be classified on the basis of different regions or continents. So they can be hot and dry, cold and dry, and even warm and moist depending upon their region of origin within a continent. One specific continent can have amalgamation of all these winds, hot and dry, cold and dry, warm and moist winds can blow over a continent or a region. They are classified on the basis of their location on different continents. So let's take up each continent or region and discuss various local winds which are found in specific continents. Now, in general, you can just see the overview of various important local winds which are found across the globe. So you have several winds which are found in North America. Then you have winds which are found in South America and across Europe, South Africa, Asia and Australia also. And we will take up each continent now and discuss important local winds of that continent. Starting with the local winds of North America, Chinook is one of the most important wind of North America. It is warm and dry wind descending the eastern slope of the Rockies mountain primarily during the winter season. So Chinook is a kind of warm wind which descends along the leeward side of Rocky Mountain. So as you remember the physiography, this whole area of North America is actually mountainous region having Rockies, mountain range, cascade, coast mountain range and they extend in north-south dimension. Okay, so Chinook actually are warm and dry wind which descend along the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountain primarily during the winter season. Winds coming from the Pacific region ascend the Rockies okay, along the windward side leading to immense precipitation along the western coast. But as soon as they reach the mountain top, they start descending along the leeward side and in the process as they reach the valley floor, they warm up which is called as adiabatic warming of the air parcel primarily because of high pressure at the valley floors compared to the mountain tops. So Chinook are warm and dry winds descending the east of Rocky Mountains and their direction is from southwest to northeast. The direction of local winds is very very important so please specifically pay attention these particular winds are also called as snow eater winds. Why? Because while they descend from these rockies, they kind of melts away the snow which freezes in the grassland region during the winter season. And they are very beneficial for agriculture and orchards which are located in these particular areas. Therefore, Chinook is actually a beneficial kind of warm and dry wind. So here you can specifically see the direction of Chinook winds. You can see that taking moisture from Pacific Ocean, they mostly lead to rainfall along the western windward side of the Rocky Mountain. But when they descend the Rockies along the eastern coast, they become warm while descending as they adiabatically warm up while descending. And in the process, the melts away the snow of the grasslands and you have prairies grasslands which are extensive wheat growing region also of North America and this area is actually very famous for orchards also so it is a beneficial wind. Now second important local wind of North America is blizzard. Opposite to Chinook which was warm and dry wind blizzards are very very cold and violent winds which originate in the northern polar areas of Canada and USA and they blow out from these regions moving towards southern regions of Canada and USA. So these winds primarily originate from polar areas and they lead to severe winter storms leading to total whiteout also in certain parts of USA and Canada and their primary direction is from northeast to southwest and they primarily blow during the winter time period. 
their main areas where they blow are Canada, northern regions of USA and central USA also. Beside blizzards, you have another important wind, which is Santa Ana. This is a very important wind and it is experienced along the western coastal region of USA. These winds primarily blow from high inland regions of USA. As we have discussed in the previous slide that all this region is actually mountainous area of USA having Rockies Mountain, Coast Mountain, Cascade Mountain and various intermountainous plateau regions also. So one of the high pressure region located in this area is the Great Basin region. So they primarily originate from the cool high pressure inland areas of Great Basin in USA and they tend to move out towards the western side. So their primary direction is from northeast to southwest direction. Initially, these winds primarily originate from highland regions. Therefore, they originate as cold wind. But while they are traveling down the valley regions, their temperature increases and they become extremely warm and dry and these areas become very prone to wildfire also. They create critical fire weather conditions due to very very dry winds and dry weather conditions in the region and because these winds are very very dry you can actually see very clear skies during this time period because of very low relative humidity which is created because of these winds. So in this particular satellite image you can actually see the Great Basin area and this is a high pressure inland area of USA. So you can see these winds blowing down the slope towards the Pacific and in the process they bring a lot of dust also which blows out from this inland Great Basin areas as these winds blow out towards the Pacific region. So this whole area becomes very very prone to forest fires also because these winds are very warm and dry weather creating winds. So in this satellite image you can actually see the sand blowing out from the inland areas towards the Pacific coast along with these winds as these winds blow down the slopes of these highland regions in northeast to southwest direction. Another important local wind of North America is Norther. These winds blow along the western coastal region of USA and they blow in north-south direction. That is, they blow from northern areas towards the southern areas and they primarily blow in the regions of Canada, USA along the Pacific coast and they also bring cold conditions along with them. Then you have Norte. Norte is again a strong cold wind which blow in the northeast Mexico region along the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean region. So it is a strong cold wind which blows in northeast region of Mexico along the Gulf of Mexico region and they are again cold winds because they blow from cold highland regions of Mexico towards the coastal areas. Besides Norte, we have Papagio. Another important wind of Central America you can say is Papagio. Papagio is strong intermittent wind blowing in the Caribbean Sea region along the Gulf of Mexico region and they blow from northeast to southwest direction. That is they blow from the Caribbean Sea regions towards the Pacific region. So they blow from east towards the Pacific coast in the west and they primarily blow in the trade wind belt zone as you know that these particular areas are tropical areas. So these areas are, are dominated by trade winds. So Papagio are strong intermittent winds which blow in the trade wind belt zone in the Central America Mexico region and you can see in this particular diagram that they are quite strong winds of Central America. This satellite imagery also shows clearly the winds blowing from the Caribbean Sea regions towards the Pacific region and 
along with them they blow out large amount of dust also from the continental areas towards the pacific region now coming to the local winds of south america in south america primarily you have two important local winds first one is zonda zonda is warm dry wind descending the eastern slope of the andes primarily during the winter season so zonda is just like chinook okay we did chinook while we were doing the north america the characteristics of zonda is specifically like chinook okay as you had rocky mountains in the north america here you have the andes mountain system running north to south along the western coast of south america and very strong winds blow from the pacific region towards the western coast of south america but these winds because you have andes here these winds are obstructed by andes and they are forced to ascend andes and in the process the whole windward side of the andes and the central and southern chile receives rainfall in these regions okay so now once they reach the top of these mountains they descend along the leeward side and in the process they again warm up due to the adiabatic warming process which we will be discussing in detail in the coming videos so zonda is warm and dry winds which descend the eastern slope of andy mountains primarily during the winter season so they are also very helpful for agriculture purposes and they primarily blow in argentina and uruguay region so this whole region is argentina and this is uruguay so these winds blow in the argentina and uruguay region of south america and these are similar to chinook winds second important wind of south america is pampero contrary to zonda pampero is actually cold and dry winds because these winds they originate from the temperate highland regions of south america and these temperate highland regions are also the temperate grasslands which are found in south america called pampas so they originate from the temperate highland regions of south america and they move northward okay so their primary direction is from south to north and the main direction of zonda was from west to east or specifically from northwest to south east and the direction of pampero is from south to north okay so they blow in south north direction along eastern coastal regions of south america along the eastern coastal region of argentina and uruguay also so they are the two regions where you have dominance of local wind one is zonda and second one is pampero now coming to the local winds of europe one of the most important local wind of europe is fon fon is again warm and dry wind which originate from the mediterranean sea region and this whole region is actually again highland region and mountainous region of europe so these fons when originate from mediterranean region they start blowing out from the mediterranean regions in the northward direction so they blow from south to north and in the process they pick up moisture from the mediterranean sea and causes rainfall along the southern slopes of alps mountains which are present here and again same as chinook and same as zonda as they reach the peak of the mountains they descend along the leeward side and in this case the leeward side is the north facing slopes of the alps so here again while descending their temperature increases due to adiabatic warming so same as chinook they are also beneficial winds for agriculture and orchards in these regions because they keep the region frost free or ice free during the winter season so you have same type of winds chinook zonda fon are all warm and dry winds which descend along the leeward side of the mountain regions and in the process they warm up while descending due to increased pressure conditions near the valley regions so we have discussed this several times that 
the windward side receives rainfall while the leeward side does not receive rainfall and in this case it is the south facing slopes of alps which are windward and which receives rainfall why the leeward side is actually the north facing slopes of alps which are in opposite direction so you can see here also these are the north facing slopes so the winds will cause lot of precipitation while ascending the alps but as soon as they will reach the peak they will descend along the northern side and in these regions you will have warm and dry winds so fawn are similar to chinook which you have in usa and zonda which you have in south america both are warm and dry winds descending the leeward slope of mountain or plateau barrier these fawn winds they look very beautiful while they descend the alps in europe fawn effect in tejeda grand canary spain can be seen while they are descending the temperature is increasing so here you will have comparatively low temperature at the mountain tops but while they descend the temperature will increase and therefore along the lower slopes they will be frost free and ice free so you will see various settlements along these slopes and you will see extensive orchards also which develop in these regions due to very favorable climatic conditions created because of this particular local wind fawn here also in this picture you can see descending fawn along the northern slopes of alps now besides fawn you have cold winds which also blow over europe you have bora which is cold and dry and gusty winds which originate from the highland regions of central europe and they blow from the central european highland regions in southwest direction so their main direction is from north east to southwest as they originate from very cold interior highland regions of europe they remain cold and dry throughout their journey except in certain parts where they become catabatic in nature also we have already discussed what are catabatic winds while we were discussing the secondary wind circulation so near the adriatic sea coast while descending these high mountainous plateau regions the temperature of these winds increases as they slide towards the valley regions leading the whole area frost free so for most of their journey they are cold and dry gusty winds but in certain parts they are catabatic winds also which experience increase in temperature so in certain areas while descending they become warm and dry also so their original nature is cold and dry but while descending the island regions along the adriatic sea they become warm and dry and their main direction is from north east to south west second important cold and dry wind is mistral this particular wind again originate from highland region of france okay the plateau region of france which is called as france massif and this is a very extensive plateau region of france which becomes cold during the winter season and therefore cold and dry winds blow out from this particular region towards the south towards the mediterranean areas as you can see in this diagram so this is the france massif or plateau of france and these winds once they originate from these cold highland regions they blow out towards the mediterranean sea squeezed between the alps in the eastern side and france massif island region along the western side so they blow between these two highland regions in the rhone valley region of france and southern parts of germany also beside mistral you have tramontane which is again a cold and dry wind similar to mistral so mistral blows in a gap between alps and france massif and tramontane originates again from france massif region and they blow between the funnel region of pyrenees highland region or mountain region in the south and france massive in the north 
these winds actually blow in this funnel which is created due to these highland regions and these winds also blow towards the mediterranean region their main direction is from as you can see northwest to southeast the direction of mistral is from north to south the direction of tramontane is from northwest to southeast so they are funneled between pyrenees in the south and france massif in the north similar to this you have tramontana as you can see tramontane in france and tramontana in italy and these winds blow out from alps and apennine regions okay this is the alps and apennine region of italy towards the mediterranean regions but their direction is from north to south as you can see here okay they are also from north to south their characteristics are also same they are cold and dry winds because they originate from highland regions of alps and apennine in italy and blowing in north south direction they blow towards the mediterranean region so you have bora in adriatic sea region central european region mistral in france tramontane also in france tramontana in italy and all three winds are cold and dry and gusty winds another important winds of europe are levant levante or levanters okay these are same names of a particular wind which blow out from the mediterranean areas towards the spain and since they blow from mediterranean region which is a water body they are gentle moist and damp warm air which originates in central mediterranean region and they blow in east to west direction out from the mediterranean region and their main area of influence is spain strait of gibraltar region southern france and they frequently bring cloud and rain since they are moisture laden warm winds so along the eastern coast of spain and along certain inland areas of spain they lead to rainfall besides this we have very cold strong and stable northeasterly wind in the northern region of europe which blows from northern polar scandinavian areas towards europe and scotland and finally it enters england also so it is north easterly in nature that is it blow from north east direction to south west direction actually you have a mountain chain running north to south in england that is called pennines so they lead to rainfall along the eastern slope because they pick up moisture also while they are crossing the north sea so they lead to little bit of rainfall along the eastern slopes of pennines and they also leads to snowfall also in the region and they are mostly experienced in the cross spell escarpment of the pennine mountain range in the south western slope of pennines in england specifically in the cumbrian region of england so you can see in this picture helm over the molasses tang edge uk now gurkail is another strong and cold north east wind that blows in the western and central mediterranean region prominently during the winter time period so in winter time period a low pressure center is created somewhere around malta in mediterranean sea due to which this particular local wind is generated that blows from north east to south west in the mediterranean sea region second important wind of this area is cool and dry summer time wind which is called as etation and etation again blows from central highland regions of europe over the balkan towards the aegean sea greece and adjacent region and it is a very dominant weather influence on aegean sea basin primarily because they are 
cool and dry winds they bring soothing effect to the summer heat of this particular region by bringing moderating effects since they are cool and dry summer time winds so due to shifting of local pressure conditions and creation of high pressure region in the balkans area and comparatively low pressure over turkey and south european regions these winds blow in north south direction in the area then you have meltemi meltemi is also a kind of itation northerly wind which is strong dry seasonal wind that appears all over the aegean sea region and they are again created because high pressure system is created over the balkan areas and relatively low pressure exist over turkey okay so you have low pressure over turkey region and you have high pressure over the balkans so this is also the factor for the creation of local wind melt me in the balkan region of europe these are the local winds of europe now let's move on to the local winds of africa the african continent also have various local winds and prominently because most of the africa this particular region lie in the tropical areas and they also have one of the biggest deserts of the world that is sahara desert so most of the winds which originate from this hot and dry region they blow out from this hot and dry sahara desert region some moves towards north other moves towards south and southwest direction so let's see what are the specific winds of africa first very important wind of africa is sirocco it is warm dry dusty wind because it originates from the sahara desert and it moves out from the sahara desert towards the mediterranean sea region so the direction is from south to north they are very very dust laden winds because they pick up the dust and sand while they are moving out from these areas but while crossing the mediterranean sea they pick up moisture also and they lead to rainfall along the south facing slopes of these areas but because they are also carrying lot of dust they are responsible for blood rain also in spain and italy and southern regions of europe because along with the moisture which they are carrying while they are crossing the mediterranean sea on their northward journey they also have dust in them while they blow out of the sahara region so once they cause rain the rain is very very muddy in nature and it looks like blood rain in certain southern countries of europe now different names of sirocco type winds in different regions of africa exist so you have chili in tunisia ghibli in libya and you have thomson in egypt so these are different variants of sirocco type winds which blow out from the sahara region towards the mediterranean regions chili in tunisia ghibli in libya and thomson in egypt besides these you have harmattan which is very important local wind of africa very important local wind so as we have discussed that most of the winds they originate from this particular area and this is tropical desert area so the winds which were moving to northward direction we had sirocco we had ghibli we had kamsin these were moving towards the north direction now certain winds also move out in the southwest direction and south direction from the sahara desert region so one of the wind which blow out from the sahara region it is warm again dry and dusty winds and it also originates from the sahara region but it blows from north east to south west direction okay and because it is very dusty wind it is very dry wind it causes dust storms in the region 
However, along this particular coastal bend, because this particular area, as if you are aware, this is equator. Okay, so 10 degree north or 10 degree south of equator, you have equatorial type of climate. So these areas experience high humidity along with high temperature. Okay, so these particular coastal areas have very high temperature and very high humidity because they fall in the region of equatorial type of climate. But this particular wind which is dry and dusty is actually a boon to this particular area. Why? Because it brings soothing effect. Although it is warm, dry and dusty, but for these particular western coastal countries, this particular wind is actually very relieving wind because it brings soothing effect to the humid condition which exists in this particular area of Africa. Hence, it is also called as doctor's wind. Okay. Why doctor wind? Because if you have high humid conditions, you have prevalence of various diseases like malaria because the humid conditions are considered appropriate for the growth of pathogens, bacteria and etc. So these particular winds, when they reach these coastal areas, they provide relief from the humid conditions. Therefore, they are called as doctor winds in the western coastal belt of Africa. Besides Harmattan, you also have one important wind which is experienced along the eastern region of Africa which is called as Habub. So Habub is warm dry wind and it is non-directional in nature. It keeps on revolving in this particular area. It does not have very specific direction. So it blows in Sudan and East African region and it is also responsible for dust storms and dry storms in this particular area. So this area of Sudan is again highland region and besides being a highland region, this region is also very very dry. So Habub is actually warm, dry, violent wind which is experienced in Sudan. Then another important wind is Burj. Burj is experienced in South Africa. It is again warm dry wind which originates from the South African highland regions and it moves towards the western coast. So these areas of Africa are again highland regions. So these winds originate from warm highland regions of Africa and they move towards the Atlantic region so their direction is from east to west and these winds are purge so important local winds of africa are sirocco khamsin harmattan abu and burj wind and you have variants of sirocco in form of kibli which are experienced along the northern coastal regions of africa now coming to the local winds of Asia, one of the prominent local wind of Asia is Buran. Now these winds are experienced in northeast and eastern region of Asia. Their direction of flow is from northeast to southwest. These winds change their characteristics as the sun migrates from north to south during the summer and winter solstice respectively. So during the summer season, they blow as hot and dry winds causing sandstorms in the region. And during the winter season, they blow as cold and dry chilly winds causing blizzards in the area. Snow laden Buran winds in Siberia or the Tundra region of Siberia are called as Parga. So, Parga is the local name of the winds which blow in the Siberian region of Russia and they are very cold leading to snowstorms. Now, another variant of Parga in Alaska is called as Barga. Okay, so as you know that this particular area is very closely related to Alaska region also. So, these very cold dry chilly winds are called as Parga in northern Siberian Russian region and Barga in Alaska. 
Besides buran, you have kara buran also. These are strong, dust-laden, fast-blowing winds which blow in Central and East Asian region. So this whole area, you have Mongolia, you have Gobi Desert in this particular area. So they are strong, dust-laden winds and they also blow from northeast to southwest direction in these areas so they prominently blow in mongolia certain regions of china also besides karaburan we have yoma it is a local wind of japan so yoma are warm and dry winds of japan they blow over the japanese archipelago prominently in north to south direction. Another prominent local wind of Asia blowing over the Indian subcontinent is Lu. So Lu is strong, gusty, hot and dry wind which blows over the North Indian plain regions and certain drier regions of Pakistan also during the summer time period that is during the month of May and June and they usually blow during the summer afternoon during the day time period in the summer season. The direction of flow is from northwest to southeast. They have potential of producing sun strokes also due to their extremely high temperature which may exceed to 40 degrees Celsius also during the summer season. Besides Lu, you have Simoon. Simoon is strong, warm, dust-laden wind which is experienced in Yemen and Arabian Peninsula. And these winds blow south to north in the deserts of Arabian Peninsula region. So this is actually the highland region and these winds blow out from these highland regions towards the Arabian Peninsula. And they are very, very dusty because on their northward journey, they travel over the vast expanses of this Arabian desert and pick up a lot of dust along with them. And they also cause dust storms in their journey. Another important wind of Central Asia is Shamal. And just like Simon, Shamal is also hot and dry, dusty wind which blows in northwesterly direction that is they blow from northwest to southeast they causes massive dust storms in the region especially during the summer time period that is during july and they can be seen blowing over iraq and persian gulf region in the central asia region so this is the area where shamal blow and in this particular satellite imagery, you can actually see the Shamal blowing out of the desert regions of Iraq and blowing plumes of dust and sand in the Persian Gulf region. And they are very hot, dry and strong winds also leading to dust storms. So here you can see an active dust storm which is blowing out sand from the tropical desert areas and dumping the sand in the Persian Gulf. So these are all the major winds of Asia. Now coming to the local winds of Australia and New Zealand. One of the prominent wind of the Australian continent is Brickfielder. It is hot and dry wind because if you remember the physiography of Australia, the whole western and central part of Australia is desert region. Okay, so you have Victorian desert, you have sandy desert, the whole western part and central western part of Australia is desert. This particular wind blow out from this desert region towards the south coastal regions of Australia and in the process, they pick up a lot of sand and dust also from these desert regions and they blow as hot and dry and dusty winds over the southern Australian region. So their direction is prominently from north to south. Significant another important wind is southerly. This particular wind is gusty wind 
flowing along great dividing range and they prominently blow in spring and summer season and they bring warm and dry weather conditions in this particular area so southerly is the wind which blow along the great dividing range so great dividing range is the important mountain range of australia and these winds they blow during the spring season and they bring warm and dry climate to this particular area they are also responsible for some rainfall in the region also because they are warm winds so in certain parts of australia where they are able to pick up moisture and they struck this mountain barrier they lead to precipitation but it is obviously localized to certain areas only so they lead to orographic rainfall also now besides australia in new zealand you have one important wind which is called as northwester so northwester is again a phone type of wind because they releases most of their moisture along the windward side you have mountain range which is running all along the new zealand in north south direction which is called as southern alps and once the moisture laden winds coming from west struck this mountain barrier of southern alps so most of the rainfall is experienced along the windward side which in this particular case is the western slopes of the southern alps in new zealand and along the eastern slopes these winds blow as warm and dry winds as they come down the slope of these mountain while descending they warm up due to adiabatic warming process so the eastern region is actually devoid of rainfall but while coming down these winds they actually leads to melting of snow in this area also leading to frost free weather condition and hence they are very good for agriculture in the region now let's see along with planetary wind circulation and secondary wind circulation while local winds are important several warm winds as we have discussed they blow down the slope and they are good for plantation crops orchards agriculture for example chinook in usa fawn in europe zonda in south america and northwester as we have discussed in new zealand so they bring good weather conditions they improve the local weather condition hence they are beneficial for agriculture purposes besides this due to local cyclonic activity local temperature differences these local winds may bring much needed rain which is essential for ripening of various fruits and vegetables and for orchards in the surrounding area so ripening of grapes ripening of citrus fruits these local winds can be very essential onshore winds are created when warm air rises over land masses causing precipitation so along the windward side you have precipitation and this precipitation is primarily orographic in nature caused when the moisture laden winds are forced to ascend a mountain barrier a plateau barrier and warm air rises over land mass causing precipitation in the local region so they may bring soothing effect to the local harsh conditions either very humid conditions may become moderate very cold conditions hot conditions so it brings moderating effect to the extreme cold hot and humid conditions in a particular area the outcome of strong local winds causes periodic showers which also replenishes large reservoir that are critical for drinking water and power generation across regions so although you have global planetary wind circulation then you have secondary wind circulation also but sometimes the large reservoirs they are replenished because of these periodic showers caused by local winds they influence the 
local cyclonic activity also in a particular area and local wind circulation pattern. For example, the small low pressure center may be created in the Bay of Bengal region which may cause periodic showers along the eastern coastal area of India. Besides global planetary circulation induced precipitation or secondary wind induced precipitation, local cyclonic activity also govern the temperature, humidity and precipitation conditions. So they influence the local cyclonic activity. These winds can significantly affect the weather in a specific area and are often responsible for producing gusts of winds that can be extremely dangerous also. So besides bringing beneficial effects, there can be some detrimental impact also. For example, they can suddenly bring sandstorms in a particular area and certain winds blow at a very, very high speed also and they may bring snowstorms also okay so sharp ice particles may hit any area along with these strong winds so they may bring dust storms ice storms snowstorms in a particular area local winds therefore significantly affect the overall region's climate as they influence the temperature humidity and precipitation conditions of a particular area they can be responsible for suddenly increasing or even decreasing the temperature conditions in a particular area therefore besides the global planetary and secondary wind circulation in a localized area the local winds can be very influential in dominating the weather conditions and weather patterns of that particular area summarizing the video now local winds are winds that blow over a limited area created by local factors like hill mountains proximity to water and local differences in air pressure conditions local terrain therefore has a very strong influence on local winds and the more varied terrain the greater the influence on the local winds the local winds therefore are small scale convective wind systems of local origin which are caused by localized temperature and pressure differences and based on these conditions the local winds can be cold or hot dry or wet further based on their global locations and their dominance over a particular area several local winds have been identified worldwide which are cold hot for example you have chinook over usa we have studied mistral bora foan dominating the european region then you have kara buran and buran in the asian region lu over the indian subcontinent pampero and zonda in the south american region and kamsin siroko burj over the african continent and we have discussed them in detail besides this all these local winds are therefore important part of weather and climate not only as separate entity but as part of entire global wind circulation system because they add local character to general wind circulation conditions and influence the local humidity precipitation temperature conditions in a particular area Therefore, local winds, although they are localized to a particular area, they have distinctive impact on the local weather conditions of a particular area. So, this was all about the tertiary wind circulation system. We have discussed all the local winds continent-wise also. Thermal-based classification of winds also we have discussed. So, with this, we have completed the discussion on wind systems, planetary wind system also we have discussed, secondary wind circulation we have discussed and in this particular video we have thoroughly discussed the tertiary wind circulation system or the local winds also. So I hope the video was informative. Thank you so much.